Hey guys, my name is Nagura and today I'm going to be talking about my UI. So lots of people have asked me to make a video about my UI and I always thought, what's the point of this? Like, I don't even know. But I finally gave in and I made a video about my UI. So I hope you enjoy it. And just to clarify before we go into the video, the UI right now is subscriber only for Twitch. So only Twitch subscribers can access it. Uh, sorry to all the non-subs, but if you want to get my UI or you want to get a similar UI to mine, then definitely watch this video because I'm talking about the add-ons that I have, I'm talking about some of the settings, I'm talking about things that you can get that um, are just on Vago, for example. So definitely check out this UI and you're more than welcome to uh, try to copy my UI yourself and try to have a similar UI than I do. So more than welcome to do so if you want to. And to all the subscribers from Twitch, this would be a video for you to figure out which add-on is what. So if there's something going on with your settings and you feel like something is not exactly the way I have it, then you can check this video and see which add-on is doing what exactly and so on. All right, so first of all, the list of add-ons that I'm using is in the description below. You can check it out right there. I am using quite a lot of add-ons, but um, a lot of add-ons that I use are replaceable by whatever you prefer, right? My base UI that I'm using is Elf UI, um, but I replace a lot of the Elf UI stuff with other add-ons. For example, I'm not using Elf UI frames. I'm not using Elf UI nameplates. I'm not using Elf UI... Um, cast bar or rate frames or unit player frames and so on. But if you want to use those, then that's totally fine, right? You can get a very similar setup than I do with just different add-ons. The add-on itself is more of a personal preference kind of thing. So for example, I'm using Grit 2 as my rate frame right here, but you don't need to use that. You can also use Elf UI, you can use Blizzard frames, whatever you feel like doing. But anyway, the list of the add-ons is in the description below, so check it out if you want to. And before I go into details about my UI specifically, I'm just going to give you like a quick and um, general thing that I think is important about UIs. It's just my personal experience. So if you want to build your own UI or you want to build a similar UI to mine, then I'm just going to explain real quick why I put things where I put them. Okay, so number one is your like vision during a fight is in the middle of your screen, right? Because if I'm fighting things like here, for example, there's a training dummy right here. So I'm attacking this training dummy. My vision is here, right? Now, uh, let's say some like an ad spawns over there. So my vision is over there. I'll remove my camera. So my camera is always here, right? So this is the visual area where you're looking at during a fight. So it's like this area here. Right? So in my opinion, all of the add-ons that are important to you should be close to this middle area, but they shouldn't cover it, right? Because if you cover something and this is exactly where you need to look, then it's covering your vision and uh, you might miss something that is very important. So definitely don't cover this area with a certain add-on, but you can have things like Wikoras that pop up quickly in this area here because this will be the area that you notice the most right if a weaker pops up over here where my mouse is right now it won't be as noticeable as if it pops up in the middle of your screen exactly where you're looking at right but make sure those kind of weaker that are popping up in the middle of your screen are only there shortly or are only there you know if it's incredibly important and you can't continue whatever you're doing anyway outside of that i think all the important requests or important add-ons should be close to this area of your screen, but not covering it, right? For example, my player frame. My player frame is right here and my target frame is right here. So they're close to the middle, but they're not covering the middle, right? So in my opinion, this is like the best place to put your player and target frame in. Because even if you look at your action, like when you're fighting right here and your eyes are in this area, if your health drops, you will see it like in your peripheral vision, right? So that's why I like having it close to the area that I'm looking at, but not exactly covering it. Now, of course, everyone has personal preferences. And if you want to have your player frame somewhere else, because that's easier for you to see, then totally go ahead and do that. Outside of that, I also think it's important to have weak auras for your spec, like for your abilities, for your buffs and so on, and for your defenses also like close to your player frame or close to the middle of this 
of your vision where you're looking at, right? So for example, I have my defensive weak or as close to my player frame because the player frame, your HP, is related to your defensives, right? If I drop to like 50% HP, then I look down to see my HP because I see it dropping. And then I immediately see, oh, my bar screen is ready. My health pod is ready. My health stone is not ready. You know, I immediately see what kind of defensives I have available by looking at my player frame because they're attached to it. So that's why I like having them here. And I like having my Moonkin slash spec abilities also like in the middle of the screen, but not covering the complete middle area, right? Because sometimes you do need to look at your weaker S that are related to your spec, even if you're very experienced, right? Really experienced player might not have to to constantly glance at your abilities cooldowns, right? Because you get a feeling for it. So by having the weak or as close, you can just glance at it like super quickly and get all of the information you need without taking your eyes away from the middle area for too long. And even if you are not experienced player and you have to look at this more often or lo for longer, then even if your eyes are looking here, you might not miss something that is happening further up, right? Like if I'm fighting these training dummies uh, and I'm staring at my Astro power bar and then something happens right here, I'm probably going to see it, right? But if I have to look all the way down here, right? If I have to look at my action bar and then something is happening where the training dummy is, then I might not see it as easily, right? That's why I like having things the most important to you, the closest to the middle area and things that are less important should be further away, right? For example, the rage frames, in my opinion, I mean, I'm a damage dealer, so rage frames are decently important, but they're not like the most important thing to me, right? So I do have them in the middle, but I don't have them closer than my weaker as, for example. Same goes with like, I mean, the details. The details are, I personally think they are important to have, but they're not a necessity that I need in the middle of my screen to always see, right? Because uh, I think things that are on the side of your screens or in the corner of your screens, like the minimap, the details, the chat, and so on, um, they are there if you want to see it, but they're not something you will see while looking in the middle. And I think that's okay, because those things are not crucial to your current situation and they don't change anything, right? Like the details won't change the way you play. And if you want to get some information from details, then you'll just glance over to the side real quick and then look back into the middle. So this is like my general idea of building a UI and uh, figuring out where to put things. And now I'm going to go into my UI specifically. I use Weakers first of all. Weakers are, in my opinion, incredibly important. I'm using a lot of weak grass. Most of my weak grass, I'm just gonna disable some that are covered. The bars are just covering a lot of my other weak grass. But yeah, so here you see all of my weak grass that are enabled are basically either close to the middle of this like vision or they're on top of it, right? So for example, these weak grass down here are debuffs on me, right? Now, of course, you could see the debuff right here if you just look at your debuff bar, but I personally think it's better to have it close to my HP bar because then I know, oh, I'm dropping low HP, why? And then I immediately see that I have a debuff on me that probably cost me to drop low, right? So that's why I put all the debuffs that I need a weaker for, any sort of debuff, like a bleed effect or anything else that is important. I just always put it here close to my player frame. So I can also see, can I use a defensive? Is it ready? Is my health pod ready? And so on. Then all the other weaker S that are related to my spec, I have them here in the middle of my screen or below. Some of my trinkets are here, for example. And then the rest of the weaker S I put closer into the middle of my screen because those weaker S are related to the boss fight, right? So for example, all of the Castle Nathria uh, weaker S are all here in the same or in the same area just because i think this is the exact point of vision that i'm looking at when i'm fighting and i only have weaker that are really important i usually don't have weaker that don't give me incredibly important information right so the weaker that are very important are all here in the middle and they also just have a glow effect or they have a sound because i want them to immediately be noticed by me right so that's why I have these weakers here. And outside of that, as I said, most of the weakers down here for debuffs. My own weakers are here in the middle. And yeah, that's it for weakers. 
Then my player frame, which is this one, is shadowed unit frames, okay? Shadowed unit frames, my target frame, my target's target frame, my boss frame and my focus frame are also shadowed unit frames. That's just a normal unit, like a player frame. You can use whatever other player frame you want. You can use uh, Alpha UI if you want or any other add-on. My uh, rate frame is grid 2. Now, the installer add-on has Voodoo, because I used to use Voodoo for a little while at the start of Shadowlands, but I stopped using it and I'm using Grid 2 again. I used to Grid 2 for a long time, and I tried to switch to Voodoo because I thought there might be some things that are better with it, but I changed my opinion. I definitely like Grid 2 a lot better than Voodoo, and I went back to it. So, if you want Voodoo, then you can just go with the installer, that um, the Alpha UI installer that has my UI. And if you want Grid 2, then just disable Voodoo, install Grid 2, and the settings for my grid are also on the Weegora page. They are not part of the installer, but they are in the Weegora's um, Discord. So just check out whatever add-on you want. Do you want Voodoo? Do you want Grid 2? They're very similar add-ons. Just figure out what you want and then go with those settings. Then my base UI, as I was uh, telling you earlier, is Elf UI. So the action bars are Elf UI, the minimap design is Elf UI, the buff design is Elf UI. Whenever I open up one of my frames, that's also Elf UI. All the like skins and the design is all Elf UI. Then my cast bar is Quartz. Also my target's cast bar is also Quartz. Like a lot of people have been asking, what's this bar at the top of your screen? And it really is just my target's cast bar and I just moved it up to the top. You see, my, my target's cast bar is right here. I personally disable my target's cast bar if it's a friendly player. So if I'm targeting a friendly person, this target cast bar does not appear because I figured it's too big. If someone, like if I target some friendly mage and you just see like fireballs, 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 like at the top of my screen, I thought it's a little bit annoying. So I only enabled enemies target bars, okay? So if I have a boss targeted or a trash mob or whatever, then I see the cast bar at the top on this like really big bar. I personally like this because I think sometimes you might miss a cast or if you're targeting a boss, and the boss has like a really huge model and you don't see the nameplate because it happens sometimes, right? The boss is like super huge, you don't see the nameplate and then you don't see the cast. But with this huge target cast bar that I moved all the way up, I definitely see the cast happening with no doubt, right? So that's why I moved it up there. My player frame is down here. I think it's important to have your cast bar close to your Weakoras for your own spec. That's why it's there. And that's it. That's Quartz. You don't need to use Quartz. You can also just use a Weakora for it. Lots of people are using Weakoras for cast bars. They don't use uh, an extra add-on for it. I personally just like having Quartz because I used it for a while already and uh, it's just nice. Then my nameplates are KUI nameplates. The way my nameplates work is that I have them go out of the screen. As you can see, if I move my camera up, the nameplates actually go out which is something not that many people have. Most people keep their nameplates inside the screen, but I personally don't like that because if there's a lot of nameplates on top of each other, so let's say my camera is right here and there's like 50 nameplates, then they all like clamp together and they're all like pushed down because uh, of the end of the screen. And then the nameplates are just like going down here where the mobs aren't even there. So I personally prefer it if they go outside of the screen because then I can just adjust my camera. You know, like I can just be like, oh, well, I don't see the nameplates. So I'm just going to move my camera up and then I can see them again, right? And I personally just prefer this way, but you can use whatever setting you want. Then another setting I have with my nameplates is that my target is highlighted yellow. You can see this like glow around the nameplate. That's my target. Uh, if I mouse over something, it has a purple glow. I like this for my Warlock specifically because I play Affliction Warlock and I use a lot of mouse overs, like for dots and for drain soul and so on. So I like seeing which mob my mouse is over. So I know, for example, if they're close together, the nameplates, then you might not be sure exactly which one you mouse over, but having this extra glow around it helps me to determine which one I'm mouse overing. Another thing I have with my nameplates specifically is you can see the one that I haven't targeted or haven't um, mouse over it is a little bit less visible. The alpha is a, a little bit increased. And I just like that because it's, again, not covering things too much, but I still see them, right? So if I want to see this nameplate specifically, I just mouse over it or I target it. 
otherwise uh, they're just less visible. My dots and my debuffs are above the nameplate. I think this is really important and I also use a whitelist and a blacklist to make sure that I don't see things I don't want to see and I do see things I do want to see, right? So I see my own debuffs, I see any form of CC of other people, like I see uh, stems or roots of other people, but I don't see other people's dots or whatever. I only see my own dots and my own relevant things that I need to see. And my dots are always on the left. So even if the mob gets the seat, like even if there's a stand on it or a root on it, then my dots will always be on the left side, which I think is also important. Then one more thing with my nameplates specifically, is that I also have them a little bit closer to the mobs model. They are not too far up because I think if they're too far up, then it's really weird to see which nameplate belongs to which mob. And I also have the distance change between the nameplates. So you can see, if I move my camera down here, you can see how close the nameplates go. At some point, this nameplate moves up. You see this? Like it, it moves up when I move my camera below because I put a certain distance that the nameplates need to have. They can't be closer than this. I personally put the distance there because that's kind of the distance of my debuffs, right? Because if I dot these uh, mobs up, then I can still clearly see the difference of the nameplates. If they would be any closer, the nameplates, then they would be overlapping each other and I wouldn't see the dots anymore on one of the targets, right? And if they're too far apart, then it creates the issue that uh, they're moving around too much the nameplates and you know some of them are above the screen and so on. So this is my preferred distance of nameplates. You don't want the nameplates to go closer than your like debuffs that you see, but you also don't want to be them too far apart. So that's why I put them exactly this way so I can still see my dots, but anything else should not be closer or further apart than this. Then the only last thing I want to say about my nameplates, the actual size of the nameplates is bigger than the visual size. That is an option that you can do with KUI nameplates and also with Plater, I think, and other nameplates as well. What this basically means is that the nameplate of this mob is bigger than what I see, okay? So the actual nameplate size is bigger than the visual nameplate size. And this is really good, in my opinion, for mouse overs and for changing your targets without having to be super accurate, right? Because if you have a bunch of mobs here and you want to target one mob specifically, if you click here, of course, I click directly on the nameplate. But if I would click here, then my mouse would be off the nameplate and I wouldn't click on it, right? But because I increase the actual size of the nameplates, this still works. So if I move my mouse down, you see I'm not mouse overing it, not mouse over, not mouse over, not mouse over, not mouse over. And as soon as I'm here with my mouse, I am mouse overing this target. Even though the pointer of the mouse is not on the target, at least not on the visual one. But that's because my actual nameplate size is bigger. Okay, I hope this, <laughs> this is something you guys understand. I personally like having this a lot because uh, it happens so many times, in my opinion, if you don't have the setting, that you just like, by one millimeter, you're just pressing on the wrong nameplate or you're missing the nameplate by one millimeter and so on, right? So I think having this like grace area where you're still targeting the correct nameplate, even if your mouse is not like 100% on it, is just really nice to have. So that's why I have this setting and you can have it too if you want with any sort of like Plater add-on or KUI nameplates. KUI nameplates has the setting here under frame size. It's called click box padding width and click box padding height. So this setting here changes the width on the left and on the right, how much more space you should be able to click on even if the nameplate's over. And this is the height that goes above and below the nameplate. I personally think the width is not as important as the height. So I put the width on 20 and the height on 30 to make sure that I uh, don't misclick the nameplates. Okay, that's it about my nameplates. Uh, then moving on, my big wigs is my rate frame add-on that I use. You can also use CBM, to be honest. Both of them are really good. There's not one that is better than the other. I personally just prefer big wigs, but if you don't want to use that, if you want to use CBM, then go ahead. But one thing I wanted to mention about big wigs real quick is your anchors. If you click on toggle moving anchors, like a lot of people just install big wigs or DBM and then they leave the settings as they are. Please make sure you adjust the settings depending on your UI. So 
certain things don't cover other things. Make sure you have the position set to whatever you want to have them with and or where you do see them properly. So for example, I put those long bars over there because I think the long bars, the full duration abilities are not as important, right? Like I, I only want to see those bars if I actively want to know an ability's cooldown. Like for example, if I'm doing uh, Sun King and I want to know when exactly the absorb shield comes up, then I look over to the bar. But I don't want to like have this in the middle of my screen, for example, right? In the middle of my screen, I want to see the big messages, like the emphasized messages. Those I do want to see in the middle of my screen because those are incredibly important usually. And they tell me, oh, if I have to go out or if I need to like line of sight or I need to whatever, right? So those messages I have in the middle, but the normal bars and the emphasized bars I have on the side so that they're not annoying me. One more thing that some people don't know that is even possible is you can recolor your bars. And in my opinion, this is really important because, for example, let's go back to Sun King. You're doing Sun King. The mythic ability of this boss is that the shade gets a really huge absorb shield. And if you don't break this absorb shield, you wipe. So this cloak of flames is what it's called, is really important because uh, you need to pull like your whatever resources you have for it. You need to make sure you have your cooldowns ready for it. You need to make sure you prepared everything for it. So as soon as the shield comes up, you want to nuke it, right? So in this case, my default colors is blue and I changed this Cloak of Flames color to purple. So let's go back just to show you again. So you go to Bigwigs, Shadowlands, Castle Nathria. Then you go to whatever boss you want to change the color of the bar with. You go to Sun King, for example. Then you go to the ability that you need to change the bar with. Here, Cloak of Flames, go here. Then uh, you go to Colors. And then you go to Bars. And here, this is the color that you change. I changed it to purple. My default color is blue. And as soon as I look over to the bars, when there's like six bars, and they all look the same to me if they're blue, right? And then I first have to read all of the bars to see which one is the cloak. So I have to read all of the names of the abilities. But if I change the color to purple, then I immediately see, oh, it's a purple bar. So I can immediately see which one the purple bar is and when it's happening. All right, so that's about big wig, sorry. But again, you can use DBM if you feel like using DBM. I'm sure DBM has like a similar option to this as well. And then about the other add-ons that I'm using, let's see, we have details over here. I have a current damage meter an overall damage meter and a healing meter, current. So this is, mainly just for Mythic Plus, because in Mythic Plus, the overall damage is kind of interesting to know too, in my opinion. And then you also see the current damage meter and the current healing meter. In the raid, the overall damage, of course, doesn't matter at all, but I just have it here anyway, because I have it for in Plus, and, that's, and I don't think it bothers me or distracts me, because it's just on the side of my screen where I rarely ever look anyway. I think those were most of my add-ons. Let me see if I missed anything. I have some arena add-ons, um, but you can use whatever arena add-ons you want. I did actually change the settings for some arena add-ons, and I think they actually work pretty well for the way I'm playing the game. But uh, of course, I'm not like a main PvP player, so uh, if you don't want my PvP settings, then I totally understand. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, so some of these are um, arena add-ons. Then I have Simulation Craft. That's just the add-on that opens the thing that you copy-paste for raid bots. Yeah, this is Simulation Craft. I'll show you. It opens this window. You copy-paste it. And you enter it into raid bots so you can sim your character. That's what the add-on does. Nothing else. Then we have uh, Trophy GCD. That's also something that I only have for my stream. Trophy GCD shows which abilities I'm casting, if you can see here at the bottom left. This is just for the stream, so they know what I'm casting. You can disable this add-on if you don't want it, because it doesn't help me, right? Like, I know what I'm casting. So if I cast Moonfire in this training dummy, I see Moonfire below. Like, I never look at this add-on. This is really just for the stream, so they know what I'm doing. So you don't need this add-on if you're not a streamer or a content creator or anything like that. Then moving on, we have, I like having advanced interface options because what this does is it gives you extra options that Blizzard disabled in the standard UI, but you can still change the settings for it, you know? You can also just use scripts for this. You don't necessarily need this add-on, 
but I just like having it. There's lots of things you can change here with your nameplates, for example. Like you can change the nameplate, motion speed, scaling, the alpha, you can change the overlap distance, the distance between the nameplates. You can change if they go outside of your screen or not. You can change um, how close they are to each other from like the side and from the top. You can change how far they go down into your screen and so on and so on, right? Lots of things you can change here. Again, you can also do this with scripts. You don't need to have um, this add-on for it, but I just like having this add-on that gives me access to those settings. Then I have big wigs, as I said, I have click. Uh, I'm actually going to talk about click real quick. It's like a mouse over add-on, but with mouse clicks. Like a lot of uh, people, when they heal, use mouse over macros. But mouse over macros do not work with mouse clicks because you can't bind them in your normal keybinds, right? Like if I bind shift left click, that doesn't work. Shift left click is just not a binding you can put like a macro on. Click allows you to bind exactly those keybinds, right? You can see rejuve is shift left click, wild growth is control left, scenario word control left, cast swift and right button, and you can also assign the spec. So for example, shift left button, enable for Balance, Guardian, Resto. Then I have this Swiftman enabled for Balance and Resto. I have Nature's Cure enabled for Resto only. I have Remove Corruption enabled for Balance and Guardian. I have Life Bloom enabled for Resto only, and so on, right? Also stuff like Innervate, Battle Rest, all that kind of stuff that you use on friendly players can be bound to mouse clicks and I think that is really really good to do if you're not doing this yet if you're not using your mouse clicks for friendly spells then I personally definitely recommend doing that because anything you can use a mouse click for is an extra binding right for example I use the right button for swiftment and that's a binding I couldn't use for anything else anyway right because right button is just attack by default and I like having that bound like, you know, like I like having my right click bound to attacking. So I don't want to have that changed at all for anything else. So that's why right click is not something I could bind anyway. So it's really good to use it as my friendly player keybind because then I'm not wasting another keybind for another spell, right? If I would use four for Swiftment, you know, let's assume I use keybind four for Swiftment. Well, then I couldn't use it for Star Search unless I make a macro. Because there, there's macros that make it to cast Star Search if you're um, mouse overing nothing or you're targeting an enemy. And it will heal if you're mouse overing your rate frames or cast a different ability if you're mouse overing rate frames. And that's also another solution that I also um, think is nice. But I definitely like using Click. So if, if you want to use Click, definitely just uh, install it. You don't have to use the same bindings as I do. Just install it and it's really easy to handle. Just make sure you use the blacklist though, yeah? So if you go to Options, Frame Blacklist, um, this is the blacklist that you need to enable. So it doesn't enable those um, bindings for target frames, for example. Like for focus, target, unit player, unit target, target frame, target frame. Like if I right click on myself, I don't want to cast Swiftment. I only wanted to cast Swiftment if I click on the rate frame down here. Because if I click on myself, right click, I want to have all of these options that you usually have, right? So that's why uh, using the blacklist makes it so it's ignoring the player frame with all of the click bindings. So that's just an extra option to make sure you can use something like right click for these kind of bindings. All right, then moving on, we also have details, of course. We have e-align updated. e-align is just an add-on that uh, if you use a command, it gives you this grid. If you want to adjust like a position of an add-on or you want to make sure something is symmetrical or whatever, then you can look at this um, at this grid. That's all it does. You, you type slash align in your chat and it opens this. Then moving on, I have Exorcist Ray Tools. This is the only reason I use Exorcist Ray Tools is for the note. Um, because my rate uses the note for certain like week or us and certain assignments and so on. Friend group is an add-on that makes you group your friends into different kinds of groups. I like having this because then I have stuff like Mythic Plus DPS, Mythic Plus Healers, Mythic Plus Tanks. Like I just all put them in, put people in different groups so I know where to look because I have a pretty full uh, friend list and I can recommend this add-on for sure. 
Then we have Gladiator, that's also just like a PvP thing. Then I have Grid 2, as I said, my Raid Frame, KUI, my Nameplates. Then we have Little Wix, which is just big Wix, but for M+. Then I have Max Cam, which is just like uh, making me able to zoom out my camera a little bit more. You don't need an add-on for it, a script works as well, but I'm just using Max Cam to make it easier. Then I use Mixed Scrolling Battle Text. This is something that you don't need, it's just a scrolling combat text. I only actually have it disabled, I think, anyway. <laughs> but if you want to use it for like damage taken or whatever, then I can recommend that. Then Mythic Dungeon Tools for M+, of course. Mythic Dungeon Tools is this add-on which makes you select routes for different kinds of keys. It shows you, depending on what you have selected, how much percentage you have. This is super, super nice for Mythic Plus because then you can see which groups you're going to be pulling to get like exactly 100% mob count. You can also see when exactly you're going to get the pride mob. And it's just like a really, really awesome add-on. Then I use Omni to see, I use Omni Bar. It's just um, PvP stuff again. Rated.io is just to see the rating, the Rated.io rating for me and for other people. Then as Arena is again, just another PvP thing. Shadow Uniframes, Simulation Craft, Trophy GCD, Weak Auras. Project Asil Roca, that's an additional add-on to Elf UI that makes you move the minimap icons to somewhere else. I personally like this, so my minimap is not covered in icons anymore. And yeah. That's it about my add-ons. Of course, the base add-on, as I said, is LFI. And then I also use Big Dumb Loot Council, which is just a Loot Council add-on that I like using with my guild because it makes you assign loot properly for items that can be traded. That was it. Sorry, that was like a really long video. I didn't think I would be talking for this long. <laughs> uh, if you actually managed to watch all of this, then oh my God. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, there's things at the bottom where I can just go to whichever point of the video you want to see, right? So uh, that's going to help you out, hopefully. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope this helped you out to figure out things about my UI, what exactly I'm using and when I'm using it. Uh, just make sure you get the UI from my Discord channel if you're a subscriber on Twitch. If you're not a subscriber, then uh, I hope this helped you to figure out the settings and have similar settings then to what I do if you want those. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this in the future. And go over to my Twitch channel if you have any questions at twitch.tv Nagura. You can uh, hang out there and ask me anything about my UI if you're interested. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye!